there everyone, it's Gaz from the 4 Games of the Apocalypse here and today we're going to be covering a game called Crawl. Uh, this is a 4 player action RPG, which is kind of also a dungeon crawler at the same time. And we contacted the guys who develop it, that's Powerhoof Entertainment, and we asked them, hey, could you give us a copy so we can have a look at it? And this seems fucking awesome, and they were like, yeah, sure. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is basically talking about the game from the perspective of three people who haven't played it before, including myself and also talk about different mechanics. So what you're looking at, or what you were just looking at, was that this, this system has a god system which each different god, including Gabe Newell, gives you different monsters. And I'll go back to that in a bit to mainly talk about what the whole game is about. So the whole game is about, you, as you can see, you have a human character running around in the dungeon, beating shit up and trying to get loot. You also have the other players, which is how the whole four player concept comes in which what they do now, they take control of monsters within the dungeon to beat the shit out of the hero, hopefully kill him, and if they kill the hero, they will become human. But only one person becomes human, so it becomes a bit of a last hit competition. And we were playing this for about two to three hours-ish, just running through, getting the hang of the game, and just having a lot of fun with it. And if you go, if you reference my preview that I did on the blog, you could tell that we really enjoyed the game. That was with a couple of other people, but this time we had Alex, as you can see. The Jew is one of the people, in, one of the uh, characters playing. So you, in, within the game, you have light, light attacks and heavy attacks. The light attack with your standard weapon, which is just a sword, is just a slash, and then your heavy is a roll. But you can get that changed later, depending on if you get a different weapon or if you get a spell, etc., etc. So it be does become a bit of a hectic murderthon, which if you are sitting down with a few friends, just kind of sitting down playing the game itself, you're going to have a lot of good fun. And as you just saw there, someone managed to get the last hit on um, Alex's character so that Josh, who's playing Fag, of course, was a like when he got the last hit, he became the human and is now at level one trying to kill the shit out of everyone else. And the whole leveling mechanic in this game does remind me a lot about Munchkin, because Munchkin was a quick race fucking everyone else over to get from level 1 to level 10 as quick as possible. But the difference between that and this is that this is slightly more fluid, and it's less about you fucking each other over, but more about everyone fucking you over. And the first person to level 10 is the most likely the person who can win the game, because when you get to level 10, you have to jump through a portal to then fight the first boss. And now what I'm going to like, what's going to come up is the nice mechanic with the evol evolution mechanic in this game, so that it tracks everyone's levels. And as you can see at the bottom, there's a Vitae. Each, the amount of Vitae is how much you can spend on evolu evolving your monsters. And depending on which god, you have different monsters. So, for example, I have a small bat, an old lady, uh, a spider, and I believe it's like a worm thing, yeah. So we can go through each different one and decide what we want to change them to. So as I'm going to do now, the eye, the eye bat thing turns into a slightly more advanced eye bat thing. Alex took, uh, decided to take the giant fish, which serves no fucking purpose. And after every floor, depending on how much damage you did to the other players and also how far the other players got, you get more Vitae. To, uh, to evolve your monsters. And, okay, now... Yeah, okay. This part of the game here is... We get to the next floor, and when you do a lot of damage to a perk to the players, you gain gold from praying to what we think is Ganesh, and he will give you tribute. But that also counts... Um, that only counts if you are the ghost for a long time. Well, it, well not that, but if... You do a lot of damage to whoever's the hero at that point in time. When you become human, you'll get a lot more gold out of it, so you'll have the advantage. So, there's the advantage of being the hero that you can finish the game, but also being the villain, being the ghosts, because the fact you can kill the hero, get loads of money, and your ride gets easier. So, when you are the ghost, you can take control of uh, monsters, which come from summoning circles on the floor, and each different monster has a standard ability and then a separate ability. Going back to the floor again. And when you take control of a monster, 
you are liable to get hit, of course, but you can also beat the shit out of them, activate a special special move in order to do a lot more damage. And so it makes it slightly likely, more likely you'll actually get the kill. The evolution mechanic in itself, just going back to it quickly while it's on the screen, is actually a really unique mechanic because it's always, depending on who you choose, it's always going to be changing and because the players get choice in what monsters they want or maybe just want to try out. For example, um, Josh is about to get a fucking Minotaur, bo uh, Minotaur Bowman, which looks really cool, like really cool, and is actually a really good monster in practicality. And when you actually do a lot more damage, you get when you get the money, you can go to the shop, and the shop's just going to be coming up in a second. And within the shop, once um, Josh actually decides to walk into the shop, I. Mm, Again, I had to... This is trying to discern what happened from a two-up PlayStation together. Right. For in Within the game, when you get to a shop, you can spend the money on getting items, spells, and weapons. The one gripe we have had about this game, since we've had it, is the bloody cross, which Josh just looked at, is a horrible item because of the fact it makes the hero overpowered very quickly. So, when a hero stands... Yeah, the... Uh, when a hero stands in a pool of blood, they will gain health. So if you've got just done a huge fight with about four different creatures, the hero's just going to go back to max health really quickly. So for example, here's an example of combat as well with some of the more evolved monster with, I believe it is Josh using a ma some sort of shadow magus. Which his whole thing is that when he, he can throw a small ball of... Uh, fire, which can bounce off of things and do a lot of damage, which you can also get as a player item. As you can see, my character just died, Josh's character took over from me, and now I have gone into a spider to beat the shit out of him. It's a very fast-paced game, and that's one of the w main reasons why we all like we all love it, because the fact, like, I think my flatmates complained about this. We were sitting down, we were shouting at each other, just saying, oh, you're being such a twat, why did you just kill me, I hate you. See, look, this was exactly one of the moments, because I killed him again. Alex just shouted, oh no, that was my kill! And it was just hilarity was ensuing, and it was such a good game. This is one of the, actually, one of the better games I've played, come out of, coming out of the indie market, apart from the big few. And I ha this game shows a lot of promise. Because especially with, say, the Steam Box being released um, later this year and also next year, it's more likely that players are going to sit down with their friends in front of a TV around the, on, on the sofa playing games. Apart unless they were, say, playing an online game, the whole point of the Steam Box, from what I remember, is um, sitting down with a few friends with a controller and playing PC games, making it slightly more adaptable for everyone else. And what I'm about to show off here is what happens when you actually get to level 10. So Alex is the actual red demon at the moment. So what's going to happen is that he gets the kill on on um. Well, Alex actually, no, Alex got killed by Josh, and now Josh is level nine, and he's about and he probably get a bit more XP to get to level 10. Now he's level 10. He's reached the limit in which that you can go to the boss fight. And the boss fight itself, I won't ruin it this part of the video, but if you want to carry on, zoom forward ahead, have a look at the boss fight, which I will be talking over slightly. The boss fight is actually so much fun for both sides as well, because it's such an adrenaline rush for the hero, but also a tactical... Um, you, like you have the coordination between the other players trying to fuck him over. So, after the fact that we put down... We have a bit of a running gag with this game that when we actually put down monsters, like when we've just been beaten and we become human again or become a ghost again, what we do is we mainly do revenge sliming. So, when you become human again, I mean a ghost again, just a quick run through of him getting items, and he jumps through the portal. So yeah, when you get it well, when you become human, you can put down slimes, and they can target the guy, and you could maybe get a kill out of it. But you know, it's just kind of funny. The funny thing 
about this part of the clip especially is the fact that Josh got the weapon, which how it works is that it has to bounce or hit something in order for it to work. It only goes in straight lines. The whole, the whole way you get into the boss fight through the portal is to hit the pus things, like the actual small grubs, into the wall that has the crack on it, like he just did, to actually um, get to the boss. And with the weapon that he chose, or that he got, is quite difficult. So here is the boss fight itself. That boss fight, the boss fight itself, which I'm going to go over about how basically the mechanics, is that because of the fact that it's mainly focused for four different players, you have one player as the hero and three others controlling each different part of the, mo of the boss. So you've got someone controlling the head, someone controlling one tentacle, which is throwing acid puddles, and one throwing bubbles, which can... I just hit my phone. Which can actually hold the hero in place while the others have a good chance to get a hit on him. And with four people that can get really fucking frantic, and it's such an adrenaline rush for the hero, dodging everything and trying to make sure you hit, um, get a hit on the boss, or get its weak spot, which is hitting the actual grubs into its open mouth to do damage. Maybe he accidentally paused it there. And when we were playing it, it was getting, it was, we were all on edge whether we would actually beat the, like, whether uh, um, Josh would beat the boss, or whether we'd kill him so someone else would get the chance to beat the boss. So that was the crit there. So when he knocked it into his mouth, he can go up to its brain and beat the shit out of it. But because of the staff's slow attack speed, he didn't really get to do it. And I'm going to, like, the, the final thoughts I have on the game is it's a very well-polished game for the build that we got for the press build. And win. It's a very polished game, and while, while we were playing it, we were saying how good and well-built this game was, and how much fun we'd ha like we had with it. The only thing that we'd like to see a change, which was I, when I asked everyone who played this, is that the separate monsters should have a little tertiary color matching who's controlling it, because clusterfucks do happen, and the bleeding cross should be taken out or nerfed. Usually when you beat the game, yeah, we got a unlock of a new god, which is, um, I believe when we played the session, we actually had a good chance of playing it. Our final thoughts on the game was that it's a very well-built four-player action RPG, and you should all definitely check it out the later half of this year on Steam. This is made by Powerhoof. Links are in the description. Follow us on all the social stuff, and we'll see you next time.